Let's turn to the book of Romans. The book of Romans. This is Paul's letter to the church at Rome. But I'd like to start in chapter 8. Chapter 8 in Romans. I know your bulletin says chapter 12, and we'll get there in a moment. But chapter 8. If you haven't read chapter 8 in the book of Romans, just sit down and read chapter 8. And when you get done, go back and read it again. And then read it again. And just let it soak into you. It is a microcosm of the, what happens when we have a life in the Holy Spirit of God. When the Holy Spirit comes to us and, and teaches us the truth of what God has done for us through Jesus Christ, we can be seriously confirmed in the faith. So I need to talk about confirmation. The youth, they stood here and they confirmed their faith in Christ. Now they've been through weeks and weeks of theological training. And they stood up here in front of the congregation. They said, yes, I believe Jesus is the Son of God. And I believe that He died for my sins. And yes, I want to join His church. I want to be part of the body of the Christ. I have discovered that there are adults that have been going to church for years, decades sometimes, and have never experienced that confirmation moment when they knew without a doubt that they were going to heaven. And I want to share with you the truth. You can know. You can have that assurance. So Romans chapter 8, it's entitled Life in the Spirit. It starts like this. There is now therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. Everybody say free. free. If you're not free today, then you're in bondage to the fear of sin and death. I don't want to live in bondage. I want to be free. All right, so, so let's move over to verse 14. Same chapter, verse 14. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption. Now, we have some folks in the church that have chosen to adopt kids. We have some kids that have been blessed because they have been adopted. It's a choice. These parents chose to take these kids. God chose to bring us into his family. So we cry, Daddy, Daddy, Abba, Father. And it is that very Spirit of God bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. You can know that you are confirmed of Christ or you can know that you're not. And, and so therefore, confirmation is not just for kids going through the sixth grade or the age of accountability in some denominations. Confirmation is that time that you come to a place where you recognize Jesus died for me personally. And I want to receive that assurance of salvation. I want to receive that faith. So I want to, well, I guess just give an encouragement to those of you that have never experienced confirmation, all right? So let me just ask, how many of you never went through a confirmation class ever? I'm raising my hand because I didn't either. I didn't either. Now, it's not to say that you have to go through a class to be confirmed, but if you've never had that confirmation experience. If you never stood in front of a body of believers and say, yes, I believe that he is the son of God, that he died for me. Yes, I want to receive baptism in his name. I want to experience all the fullness of God. If you haven't received that confirmation moment, then you're probably not yet confirmed. You're still not certain. So we're offering catch-up confirmation classes. For those of us that missed it, you can catch up. You can catch up with what the confirmation students Know now that God loves them and set them free. Now, we've already had one class, but you can join us next Wednesday at 6 o'clock in the big house. We have two more classes. It is an open discussion format. Bring your theological questions, and prayerfully, at the end of our time together, you will be confident. You will be confirmed. So let me talk about confirmation a little bit more. Turn again in Romans to chapter 12 now. Chapter 12. Chapter 12 begins with new life in Christ. New life in Christ. This is that confirmation life. 
Paul writes this, I appeal to you, therefore, my brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. This is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world. Everybody say, do not be conformed. Do not be conformed to this world. Actually, the Greek says this age, to this time, to what we're going to do. Do not be conformed to what you're seeing going on right now. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. Everybody say transformed. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the will of God, what's good and acceptable and perfect. God's will for your life is to be confirmed in Christ. So I would like to talk about the difference between confirmation and confirmation. Remember what we just read here. You can be confirmed, which is the renewing of your mind, the changing of what you thought, and to have a new spirit within you to know, yes, I am confirmed in Christ. Or you can be conformed to the worldly standards. So let me talk about confirmation. So I've got a slide. For, oh, no, that's the wrong slide. That ha- that's confirmation of a horse. Ah, oh, uh, you know, you try, you work hard, and you mess up. I just... I, that's the wrong slide, guys. Oh, but, well, since it's up here, let me just talk about confirmation of the horse, all right? It's up here anyway, all right? If, if you've been in 4-H or FFA, you know, you know, confirmation is an important aspect in critters, you know, and in horses. Uh, the, 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 the point lines are from, from the hocks to the hips to the shoulders to the knees to the neck to the, to the pole, they're all supposed to be in proper confirmation. And if if you have the proper confirmation according to the standards, then you're going to have a pretty good specimen. As a matter of fact, here's some descriptions on how to have the right confirmation, at least in the equine perspective. Now, this is an example of the perfectly conformed horse. But what about the perfectly conformed human? You see, the world has a standard for us, and the world says that we're supposed to be politically correct. The world says that we're supposed to be gracious beyond understanding grace is costly. The world says we're supposed to accept the way things are because that's our culture, that's this present age. The world says we should conform. And I say, Scripture says, Something different. Scripture says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed, confirmed by the renewing of your mind. This is new life in Christ. Not by the world's standards, but by the standard that Jesus set for us. Was Jesus kind? Was Jesus gracious? Was she- yes, all that and more. But Jesus did not conform to the world. So let's talk about that being transformed. What does it take to be transformed by the renewing of our mind? What's it going to take for that to happen? In a word, I'm going to call it confirmation. But it's going to take a little effort on our part. The confirmation students that were received into the church, they have spent weeks and months studying to the place in which they were ready to make that profession of faith. What about us? Turn in your Bibles now to Philippians. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. When you get to Philippians chapter 2, look at verse 5. I guess the way for us to be confirmed is really pretty simple. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. There you go. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. There you go. And we can be confirmed. But if you look at this image, you can see all of these aspects of the personality of Jesus. The the mind of Christ. Loving, gracious, meek, righteous, gentle, content. Oh, and you can look at some of the characteristics in the human mind. Prideful, angry, dissatisfied, resentful, selfish. How can we be conformed to the world 
and be confirmed in Christ. It's impossible. And so there, we have to set our minds on Christ by the renewing of our minds and not conforming to the world. Turn to the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John, chapter 16. I want to back up to chapter 16 because there's a couple of verses in there that are important to understand how the Holy Spirit works in our confirmation. Verse 7, John 16, verse 7. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go, the advocate, that is the Holy Spirit, will not come to you. But if I go, I'll send him to you. And when he comes, don't miss this, he will prove the world wrong. You can just put your finger right there. He will prove the world wrong. Wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin because they didn't believe in me. About righteousness because I'm going to the Father and they will see me no longer. About judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. That is Satan, the liar. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them yet. When the Holy Spirit comes, the Spirit of truth, He will guide you into all truth. God's truth. The truth to be confirmed in Christ. If you're still there opening, look over at chapter 17. Chapter 17 and verse 11. Jesus' words, this is a prayer. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. I'm coming to you. Jesus recognized he's leaving us, leaving the disciples, leaving us in the world. We're in the world, but not of the world. So, Holy Father, protect them in your name so that they may be one as we are one. This world is not easy. I I couldn't handle what it's like to go to school anymore. What you guys have to deal with in the public school system, it's incredible. There's no more respect. There's no more righteousness. I believe that when we start to kick God out of school, we kick the ability of our kids It is so tough. And in our culture, we're taught to be so tolerant that we have kicked God out of life. We have, yes, we have become conformed to the world instead of being transformed by the renewing of our mind. Verse 15, Jesus recognized, he knew what we'd be going through. I'm not asking you, again, this is the prayer to the Father, I'm not asking you to take them out of the world. I'm asking you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world just as I do not belong to the world. So sanctify them in the truth. And your word is truth. You can be confirmed. When Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will receive power. Power to be my witnesses, but I believe power to withstand the arrows that are coming from Satan. You will have power to not be conformed to the world. You can experience confirmation. You can know without a doubt that if Jesus comes today, I am saved, spirit-filled, and I'm going to heaven. So, that's really pretty much it. That's what I wanted to share with you today. Confirmation versus confirmation. Now, if you'd like to talk with me after the service today about the catch-up confirmation class about being baptized and receiving that salvation, that sacrament gift. If, if you need to renew your baptism, if you've been baptized already and you just need to go through that because you just think that it, it would help, we don't re-baptize here, but we certainly will renew your baptism. And we will go through whatever rite, whether it's sprinkling, pouring, or immersion. And we will let the Holy Spirit do the work of getting you back in confirmation with Christ instead of being conformed to the world. Okay, I need to take a deep breath. Because you can tell I got on a soapbox here. Because I believe strongly about that. Because I was once going through the motions. And I didn't know that I was going to end up in heaven. I was pretty certain. As a matter of fact, I already had my ticket punched to hell. And I was sitting in church just like y'all are. I wasn't confirmed. It can happen. You can receive that confirmation. But we have to renew our mind. Transformed into the mind of Christ. Let's pray. Holy Father, 
we pray that you would love us into your kingdom. For anyone here that doubts the gift of eternal life in Jesus Christ is given to them, I pray your spirit open up, opens up their mind right now, transforms their mind to receive the truth that your gift is given to them. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, may it be so in Jesus' name. Amen.